Okay, now with all of this out of the way, it's basically time for the unveiling. I mean, the rest of the system build is pretty pedestrian. I mean, this is a glorious system. There's the 32 cores and so much memory. I've got the Corsair Dominator memory in here. This is the fastest memory that I have. 64 gigabytes. It is a very nice kit of memory. CL14, I think? I'm, I'm not really sure, but in benchmarks, it is consistently very, very impressive. Probably need to add a little bit more to it to really satisfy my needs, but get the Intel SSD and my 3D printed mount, and this system's basically ready. It's ready for the unveiling. Threader for 32 core workstation with modular liquid cooling. It's easier than you think, and it makes more sense than you think, especially for somebody like me that's, you know, changing their system configuration around depending on what sort of a thing they're running or what problem they're trying to solve. I've got a custom loop in here now. It's, it's flexible tubing. It's not as uh, not as ornery as uh, hardline tubing, but you know, cooling the GPU and then adding that, and then how are we going to manage, you know a GPU block, how are we going to add taking the GPU out, putting a new GPU in? Maybe I want to pop the GPU out entirely and uh, put an air-cooled GPU in to do some testing or something like that. Is there an answer in water cooling? Well, yeah, EK does actually have the answer. I helped a friend put together a custom loop cooling system based on the uh, Intel 9900K. That system turned out amazing. We put in a gigabyte motherboard, some team group memory, we put it in a Lee and Lee dynamic case hardline, you know, an orange themed build. He's super into hard lines and uh, I helped with some of the other stuff. He custom liquid cooled his GPU and we put the system through its paces. And the thing that struck me the most about that system was how quiet it was. He had a, just an insane overclock. And uh, I came back upstairs to use this. And yeah, I've got a, an EK, just a Performance 360. It's the kit, it's a sort of a no brainer, uh, but with the velocity block on my 32 core Threadripper. And I did that versus a tower cooler. I mean, I could use a tower cooler, but I did that to try to make the system a little quieter and it does work. It's, it's, it's great because it is a little bit quieter. I can run three Vardar fans in the top at a relatively low RPM, still get plenty of airflow through the system. The trouble runs when I start mixing in my Tesla V100s. Now I've used these in the machine learning videos. I've used these in, in several different videos and several tutorials and helped some people out in the forum with some different stuff. And so I'm always taking them in, you know, putting them in, taking them out, putting them in, taking them out. And these are really designed for servers. They're really designed for the airflow that you would have in a server case. So there's not actually a fan in the V100, but yes, it absolutely does need active cooling. Well, I 3D printed a shroud as a way to deal with that. And I got to thinking, there's gotta be an easy way for, you know, I would be a lot more enamored with custom loops if there was an easy way to uh, add and remove things to the loop. Well, it turns out there is. Coolants has uh, these quick release fittings. So you can just, and you're not gonna lose much fluid because it springs closed. Also was not super satisfied with my 360 millimeter radiator in my giant Fractal Define 7XL case because it doesn't quite go all the way down and I tried to fit a CD-ROM in there but the CD-ROM doesn't quite fit. So I wanted to put a larger radiator at the top and maybe even add one to the front, especially if I'm considering cooling my GPU and maybe even my V100s. So I bought all this EK stuff that you see here. I even bought an extra radiator and some other fittings but I did reach out to EK to say, Hey, I've got this Threadripper system, and I think this is going to be a five-year system. And it's not, I mean, it's cattle. I want my cattle to be healthy, but at the same time, like, just throw it in a cardboard box, and if it's fine, don't worry about it. I've helped some friends with their five-year-old systems, you know, four, three, four, five-year-old systems, that had custom loops, even, like, four GPUs. Justin, uh, we put together his Threadripper system earlier this year, which, by the way, he's loving and is amazing and does all kinds of ridiculous insanity. Uh, he had a custom loop set up, and uh, the plasticizer and the colorant and the, and the cooling fluid just leached all out, and it was bad, and it was a mess, and those, those, oh, just, oh, it wasn't good. And so if I look at my lube here that I've been running for about six months, just distilled water with a little bit of bioside, you can see that the tubes, uh, they're getting, getting kind of yellow. They might be starting to leach a little bit of their plasticizer in here. I'm not really sure how... Uh, how my cold plate looks in the velocity block because you know we did the intermax teardowns and it's not good i definitely don't see anything growing in here so that's good so it's not chinese tap water but uh 
it's also something that has worried me a little bit. I've been working on servers that have really awesome, you know, closed loop cooling and quasi custom loop cooling. And I can't help but notice all of those use, you know, like standard automotive black rubber fittings. I mean, cars have had this figured out for a long time. It's like move fluid from A to B, make sure this tube is gonna last 20 years, don't actually leak anything into the fluid. So I asked EK about that and they said, yeah, it's black rubber, that's a thing. So this is the super insane stability. It's not a clear tube, you can't put fancy metallic cooling in it, but again, cattle, not a pet. I mean, you can still be proud of your cattle. It's like, I have the most, you know, roided out super cows on earth or Centa cow or whatever. I mean, the, the number of cores here, it basically is the Centa cow of computers. But um, yeah, EK, it turns out that they're working on a pro line. They're working on a pro line for people just like me that addresses the quick release problem or will make it easy for me to add and remove V100s to the system with custom loop liquid cooling and to be able to move it between systems that have the same EK setup as well as you know super stable tubing that I don't have to worry about and maybe not so much of the RGB bling. So yeah EK sent over the mother load. There was there is one honorable mention though that's Asetech. What, what is this? What is what is this insanity? Well this is an RTX 2080 Ti but it's only a two slot card but this is great when you've got a case like this because you know, Threadripper's only got four expansion slots and I can put this in and have this card be sideways in the vertical slots and it won't take up any of the extra room so I can use all four of my X16 slots without resorting to the expense and complexity of a custom loop. I mean, yeah, there are, you know, just two slot blower style 2080 Ti's but this will clock a little bit higher and be cooled a little bit less because it's not one but two blower motors. I'm gonna do a separate video on this just to show you the options, but being able to mount it like this in a tower case and be able to use your horizontal and vertical slots both, that's maximum efficiency. Good job, Asetech. This is the EK Quick Disconnect Kit. And this is actually, I ordered one of these on Amazon just to kind of see what it was all about, like not knowing what I was doing. And that's what made me reach out to EK and say, hey, what's up with this? So the idea with the GPU block is something a little like this. Now this would already be screwed in. You want to screw it in before you actually connect your barb fittings, but you'll have this mounted on the side of your GPU with your GPU block. Imagine your GPU block is in place. And then your soft line tubing is going to go over toward the front of your computer and hook into the block. So your quick release fittings will actually be located here at the block and on your actual lines. So you can just pop your GPU off and that's why there's so much spacing on this block. So each, each thing will have its own lines basically. And that's how it'll, uh, it'll do the fluid flow and distribution and all that. So the idea is you're going to have all of your quick release fittings on this block and then you're going to be able to just pop a GPU on and it's like, oh, it's time to switch machines. Just pop it off. It's sealed. It's nice. And that's going to be our distribution block. So we've got our 360 millimeter radiator for the front and I've got the barbs in the top here, at least temporarily. This is the other style barbs for the transparent tubing. This is not for the black rubber tubing. You've really got to make sure that you get the correct fittings for the correct tubes or you're gonna have uh, you're gonna have issues. There's gonna be water everywhere. So I can put it at the top, but there's not really a lot of clearance here for the black rubber tubing. So I'd have to use something like a right angle fitting. I've only got these chrome right angle fittings on hand. Probably get something something else, something a little different if I were planning this build out a little better. Or I could flip the radiator around and have these at the bottom of the case. That'd give me a few more options in terms of tube routing. I could actually route you know, a tube behind here somewhere that you don't see it. Uh, maybe, maybe, that's an option. I like to always do a little bit of a test fit when I'm doing a build like this because you never know exactly how things are gonna go together. And even though Fractal says there's enough room for this big 480 millimeter radiator in the top, you get a little bit of margin at the top and bottom of the radiator. And so it doesn't exactly quite fit perfectly in there. I've got to use the fans as a little bit of a spacer. So this is pretty much the only way I can mount this. Fortunately, the top's removable. Fractal makes it easy. For the pump, because this is an increased water flow situation, it's the EK Kinetic Quantum. It's a nice pump. I'm not sure that I wouldn't want to go a dual pump 
configuration with a build like this. I'm gonna try it with this pump, but I may actually go for a dual pump situation because, you know, worst case scenario, we're talking three GPUs. It's pretty similar to the D5 pump that comes with the, uh, the EK performance kit, which is what I'm used to, except the lid has three intakes and we will be using uh, one of the intakes because I plan to run a fill port all the way to the top here to connect it to this. So, and it is RGB. I mean, you get a little bit of RGB here, but EK. One common misconception with the D5 pumps from EK is that you could use the top as an inlet. Well, you can, but it's not really recommended. On this particular pump, the inlet and the outlet are located right next to each other, and they're at the bottom of the port. If you find that you have you know, excessive air in the system or you get an air bubble that comes in through the inlet and is immediately pulled in through the, uh, uh, you know, through the pump, you can actually add the, take this little plastic thing out and add the uh, tubes that are included in the box so that you don't get the uh, air bubbles through the system. Or at least the air bubbles that come in through the inlet will go to the top and out of the way of the pump so the pump doesn't suck the air back in. One thing that is a little annoying about the mounting bracket here is that it's not drilled to mount to 120 millimeter holes. This has great options for mounting your distribution block. It does not have great options for mounting to pretty much anything else because most of the stuff in your case is set up for 120 and 140 millimeter fans. So it turns out these two screws in the middle do actually match the mounting pattern that's where two 120 millimeter fans meet each other in the radiator. It's kind of up here out of the way and I can have my my small, my spaghetti strap GPU tubes sort of come down this way and my CPU tubes can be routed up here out of the way. So I think up here is the thing that makes the most sense for me. So I'd rather have the mounting stability of having the screws on the end, but I'll take it. You can build your own pump bracket. Fractal in particular has their multi-bracket. And so this actually works well with the multi-bracket. For thermal paste, I'm using Kingpin's cooling jar stuff. It's a little unsettling because I gotta like scrape it on, but Bearded Hardware turned it on to me, or Bearded Hardware turned me on to it. It works pretty well. Ran out of tubing. Not quite enough tubing. Gonna need two rolls if you're gonna do a build like this, two sections of it or whatever from the EK store. So here we are at about a, a mid build stage. Uh, it's not been easy. And actually, you know, running short of this rubber tubing really sort of complicated things a little bit. I used a little bit of my old tubing, which has the different fittings and some other stuff uh, out of the block, the distribution block and into the CPU. You don't want to hook your CPU up in line necessarily, although you could. That's what I ended up doing here. Basically everything goes into the distribution block and then out again. These fittings are a little smaller than those, so it's gonna restrict the flow just a tiny, tiny little bit. But I'll be able to put my quick release fittings along the bottom here for up to four connections. And then some thin black cabling will come down here and connect to the edge of the cold plate for the GPU. But before I do that, it kind of makes sense to go ahead and fill this thing and see if we've got any leaks before we get to the quick release stuff. Right now, nothing in here is quick release. I mean, I could have used these for quick release so that I could unhook my uh, you know, processor or something like that, but I ended up using this right angle fitting and I've got just a dummy plug in the end here, but eventually I could put a drain port on that and that'll work out real well. I'm not really much of an expert on custom loop cooling. I don't really put a lot of time into it or anything like that, but I found that using these quick release fittings, like I can just put one of these inside the case that's just kind of on a dangler or even just right here on the other side of this and I can use the other side of the quick release with just a tube when I'm ready to do draining. So normally this is closed and I can just connect it and go that but these aren't really meant to be disconnected for a long time. If they're normally connected do make a lot of sense for uh, being able to dump the fluid in the loop quickly if you don't want to buy a ball valve just as long as it's normally connected. So like for example, I could put this quick release fitting in here in line in this tube and then when I want to drain it, I can just undo the quick release connection and then connect another quick release tube and then be able to just dump, you know, dump the pump that way. Everything that's coming out of the uh, this side of the radiator. But ball valve also works really well too. It's just a little more permanent. 
With the main part of our system fully put together, I mean, I don't have the RAM in there, I don't have any peripherals, there's no video card, I mean, it's not really gonna post, I'm just running the pump to, to mess with it, but with the main part of the system put together, it's time to set aside the tower and go back to the, the Lignum. It's an $1,800 four terabyte SSD, and a $7,000 GPU, and another $7,000 GPU, and then like a $1,200 GPU, and then a lot of cooling, like, Mounting a custom water block on a GPU really could be its own mini how-to. There's a lot of videos on the internet for doing that, and I'm definitely not as experienced in doing that as some other, I mean, some, some other YouTubers live to do this. So I'm a little more utilitarian, hence my use of black rubber tubing. A little bit of double stick tape does wonders. That feels like real wood. That is real wood. That's not even veneer. That's like, that's real wood. Notice that I have not mounted this to my GPU at all. What you should do at this point is connect your quick release fittings to these barbs with the appropriate length tube and actually do a leak test. You know, EK recommends a 24 hour leak test. That's basically what I did with uh, the setup over there. The setup that I was using wasn't super convenient for <laughs> leak testing outside of the machine just because of the tolerances and the lengths of cable. Distilled water is non-conductive at least until it hits metal ions and if you do have a leak as long as it's not super severe you can clean it up with uh, paper towels notice that i also have not added the ek cryo fuel yet once i'm reasonably satisfied the the loop is operating the the way that i want i'll actually flush out this initial uh run of distilled water and then add back a 10 to 1 mixture of distilled water and ek cryo fuel but i'm just using the basic stuff i'm not using any of the colorants or anything like that because only the basic stuff has that five year stability that i'm looking for you could also add a couple of drops of iodide but for some reason here in the states it's, it's gotten a little difficult to get iodide at the, the local pharmacy they want to sell you something else and i don't trust it now that we've tested our block to make sure that it's reasonably leak free we can transplant the block onto our 2080 ti you always want to save all the little screws and stuff because there's a million tiny screws and everything in this bag and you want to save the screws from this block as you take it out from the regular cooling system um, just in case you want to put it back later because you will want to put it back later at some point at some point I'll be like I'm gonna put this in a different computer and then it's like oh yeah get the Intel SSD in my 3d printed mount and this system's basically ready. It's ready for the unveiling. Uh, actually, wait a second, hang on. It's not, it's not perfect. Um, give me one quick second here. Ah, ha, ha. yes. There we go, yes, this is, oh, yes. Mm. There we go, now it's time for the unveiling. That's my brand new Threadripper system. Well, it's my brand new upgraded Threadripper system. I've logged almost a year on this thing. Well, not quite, I guess, whenever Threadripper launched. But um, I'm gonna be using this thing for a long time to come. I really like the Fractal Define 7XL. Really like the mods that I did to it. Worked out pretty well. If you wanna build this system for yourself, parts list and the level one forum is at your disposal. And when all this is level one, I'm signing up and I'll see you in the level one forums.